Welcome back to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Today we're working on a 2017 BMW 5 Series and the customer complaint is the rear end is hanging really low. The air suspension won't rise the car anymore and it was brought to me by another shop who already replaced both rear uh, air springs. They checked for the leaks, couldn't find anything wrong, gave me a call and that's where we are. So let's diagnose this together. What do you guys think? Customer complaint? Well, I guess it's confirmed. It's kind of obvious. So let's hook up a scan tool and see if there are any fault codes stored in the air suspension system. The code we are getting is race control time. Unfortunately, quite a common code when you're working on BMWs. This code basically means the computer knows the car is too low by looking at the ride height sensors. When the computer is trying to raise the vehicle by activating the air pump and it takes way longer than expected, it will set this code. Now normally you will have an air leak but both air springs were already replaced by the other workshop and they already checked for leaks. What we're going to do next is use the bi-directional controls of our scan tool and command that air pump to raise the rear of the vehicle. And let's see what happens. Now, as you could see, the vehicle didn't raise at all. Now, if this was an air leak that was that big, the car didn't raise at all, I'm pretty sure we would have been able to hear it. Now, I don't hear anything out of the ordinary. The auto shop also checked for leaks and couldn't find anything either. So I'm pretty sure we don't have an air leak. But if we have got no air leaks and the pump is running, Though the car is not raising, what could be our problem? Any thoughts? The air suspension compressor for this car lives behind the rear bumper, this is the tow bar, underneath a plastic cover which I already took off. The air supply from the compressor comes into this valve block and then is divided to the left and rear right air springs. Now I checked for leaks from this point up until the air springs and there are no leaks. So if there are no leaks from this point onwards, but the compressor is running, why isn't the vehicle raising? Exactly, we've got to check the pressure. If the compressor is not supplying enough pressure, it might not be strong enough to raise the vehicle. Now I modified a pressure sensor, which I can hook up to my scope. I hooked it up to an airline I got from the junkyard. Now, you can also use a manual gauge or any gauge you've got available. Now I'm going to hook up my pressure gauge to one side of the valve block and I'm gonna plug the other hole with a special plug I made to prevent the air escaping to the other side. The 
that's one. And that's the other one. I'm gonna plug up this hole. There you go. And I'm gonna hook up the sensor to the other side. I've got the pressure sensor hooked up to the valve block and I'm going to use the bidirectional controls of the scan tool to turn on the pump. Now as I do that, we can watch the pressure on the screen of my scope. Now, if you're thinking, I didn't see anything happen, you're right, nothing happened. So to have a little bit of fun, I hooked up another airline to that valve block, and we're gonna take BMW's special tool, and it's called GL OVE Blue, just kidding. And we're gonna tape it up to this airline so we can actually visualize the amount of pressure this compressor is producing. <clears throat> so let's tape it up. Nice and tidy. And I'm going to use the bidirectional controls of the scan tool to turn on the pump. That should do it. Now let's turn on the pump. Alrighty. Now, that's a sorry excuse for a compressor. <laughs> I love these gloves. They're basically a special tool for everything. Now you can imagine, if this compressor is not able to inflate this rubber glove, it's certainly not gonna raise this heavy vehicle. So I'm definitely calling it a bad compressor. I wanna show you guys one more thing before we are going to replace it. Now take note that when I turn on the pump, I can easily stop the airflow with my finger. Now let's turn on the pump. There we, there we go. See, it can easily be stopped. There's very little pressure. This compressor is very easy to remove, but you gotta remove the entire assembly. There are nuts on top, which you can't get to in the car. There's three connectors, two in front, 
and one at the back, an intake hose, and four bolts holding it down. Let's start out by removing the intake by prying it loose, like so. Get it out of its bracket. Then disconnect the connectors, one at the back and two at the front. And now we can undo those 10 mil bolts. This one. That's two. That's three. That's number four. Look what I found. <laughs> it's time to install a new air compressor. I've got the new compressor installed and I hooked it up to my pressure gauge. Now does anybody know what the pressure reading of a good air compressor should be? If you don't, let's find out. When we take a closer look to the measurement and put a ruler in, we can see we have reached a thousand kilopascal or 10 bar. Now when the pressure dropped, it was actually my homemade connection that started to leak. So it's quite safe to say that a good compressor can deliver at least 10 bars or 145 PSI. I want to demonstrate that with a good compressor, it's very hard to stop the airflow with your finger. So let's command the compressor on and let's try to stop that airflow. Now there is a lot of pressure over there and it's basically impossible to stop the airflow with your finger. And now my favorite test approved by 99% of vehicles manufacturers, not the glove test. Let's command the pump on. It didn't blow. <laughs> I thought it was gonna blow, it didn't. But you can see the difference. That's more like it. Now let's hook up these airlines. But before I do that, I like to loop those little seals that are on there so they seat properly and won't leak. So a little bit of grease on there. Not too much. Okay. Let's start with the red one, comes on top, it's for the left side of the car. There you go. Now make sure you don't over tighten these. This valve housing is made of plastic and you can easily strip the threads out. So don't go gorilla on them very gently that's enough now the blue one 
that is for the right side air spring. There you go. Very gently. And that, that's it. The moment of truth, can this new compressor raise this vehicle? There it comes. And we've got a fix. This is a 2017 car, so it's not even two years old. And the air suspension compressor has already failed. So if you work on BMWs, sooner or later, you'll be changing one of these. Now at least you know the pressure should be at least 10 bar or 145 PSI. You also got some directions on how to test it. You don't need to use the scope. You can use any meter you've got available as long it goes well over 10 bar. Now if you like this video and if you wanna learn more, please subscribe to my channel. And when you hit the little bell, you will get a notification each time I post a new video. Diagnosed then, fixed it again. See you next time, guys. Since we are all diagnosticians and not part changers, we are curious by nature. And come on, this is the Diagnosed Dan channel. We all gotta learn something, right? So I took this compressor apart to see what failed. Now this is the electric motor. The electric motor drives a piston. This piston goes directly into this cylinder. And this cylinder is connected directly to this dryer or pressure chamber. When the compressor is running, this chamber is being pressurized. And the pressure line that goes to a valve block is connected directly to the pressure chamber. Now normally, this chamber is filled with filters and this material that absorbs the moisture from the air and dries the air before it enters the system. At the back of a pressure chamber, there is a vent valve. And this vent valve is normally closed. But when it opens, it opens a path from the pressure chamber to the outside air. Now normally, this valve only opens when the pressure gets too high, above 13.5 bar, or when it's commanded to vent the pressure from the pressure chamber by the computer to allow the car to lower. I investigated the compressor and I want to show you guys what was wrong with it with a little experiment. Now remember, the system can only pressurize when the vent valve is closed. If it's open, the pressure can escape to the outside air. I taped my special tool to the pressure chamber and I hooked up my smoke machine. Now normally, the pressure would go through this pressure line to the valve block. But let's see what happens when we block the pressure line and build some pressure.
the vent valve is stuck open. And if the vent valve is stuck open, the system will never pressurize. Now, depending on where you live, there's a lot of moisture in the air. And moisture can corrode internal parts, like this vent valve. Or take a look at a picture I took from that tiny exhaust valve inside the cylinder head of our compressor. Now in the next step, I want to energize this solenoid to see if we can free it up again. I put the microphone on the solenoid, so if we energize it, you guys should be able to hear it click. Now there's live voltage over here. And as you guys can hear, absolutely nothing. Now let's try again. I did it a couple of times. I just reviewed a part of the video of me trying to free up this solenoid. Now I noticed that in the video you could hear two kinds of clicks. A hard click which I could also pick up with the naked ear, and a softer click when I couldn't hear anything at all, but only the microphone picked up. Now the hard click was the solenoid moving all the way, like it is supposed to be. When you hear the soft click, it's the solenoid being stuck and trying to move, but it can't. I also noticed that sometimes you can hear a delay in the spring pushing back the solenoid all more proof that this solenoid was our problem. Now let's try again. Not yet. Let's try it one last time. And we have got a fix.